<laughs> more <laughs> deserving of a narrative, yes. <laughs> uh, Ram Kamal's gift. Uh, one second. So Ram Kamal's gift, um, this story is about a man. I'll, I'll read the first line, which tells you half of what you need to know about him. Ram Kamal, who claimed to be the author of the greatest novel never written, disappeared <laughs> nine months ago. So Ram Kamal turns out to be this uh, man who is either a genius or an imposter, maybe a bit of both, certainly a hustler, but most of all, someone with the gift of uh, able to uh, 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 the gift of drumming up a cultish following. So all his followers are now perplexed and looking for where he is. The narrator is a bookstore owner, uh, Ram Kamal's friend, who is telling the story, and I'm going to read a page from when they first met. Ram Kamal's ideas were not new to me, but the sense of urgency was refreshing. I've been around literary types practically all my life. Literature was my truest love. I started collecting books when I was 10. I studied English in university under the misguided notion that the professors would share my passion. They turned out to be glorified clerks who cared only about their salaries and about quoting other professors. I pottered around in publishing and editorial roles in my 20s until I set up my own bookstore. I knew I couldn't write, but I could not stop wanting to keep transacting with the written world. I didn't particularly enjoy the people who were drawn to this world. They tended to be broken, touchy, and insufferable. More pitiful than despicable, but annoying nonetheless. Ram Kamal seemed free from such afflictions. He was a being possessed with the desire to create something new, unprecedented, something inherently sufficient. What we need to do now, he said, always in media's res, is to bring the city and the novel together in a whole new manner. Dhaka's a new kind of city, a glimpse into our post-apocalyptic future, and it's time to find a new form, suitable to its reality. We were sitting in my store, which he had turned into his primary operating base. He stopped by, sometimes several times a day, to leave his keys or pick up messages, to drop off parcels or laundry, to make phone calls or secure an abbreviated meal, to borrow cab fare or cigarette money, and then to return those puny hand loans, and even to conduct complex, confusing arithmetic concerning them. But most importantly of all, he came by to hold his utterance. Baha and Jaydeep were regulars from the start. Baha worked as a statistician for a research institute but his heart, as with the rest of us, was sown to literature. Joydeep was an anachronistic soul and resisted any set occupation. Most of the others were students, or recent graduates, and many connected to some facet of the writing world. Newspapers, publishing, little magazines, even copywriting. It was the spring after our first meeting, the start of a new millennium, and prophetic goals appeared to be in the realms of the possible again. Ram Kamal held his actors almost nightly, explaining to us the inevitability of this new codex. It will supply the city with a grammar, he said. It can, sure as hell, be borrowed from places where the streetlights or plumbing work. What we need to write is nothing short of a manual. The manual will explore how to be a citizen when the city itself is perpetually in Dafara. Thank you. Anna, whose book, Good Nights, Mr. Mr. Kissinger, can be purchased from the back of the room. Amir, did you want to do a quick introduction to Asan, or shall we seamlessly move straight to him? Asan, poet, reading from The Devil's Thumbprints, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 